Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Leslie Onstead. Today we're going to play with some polypore and primer elements. And first I want to show you how easy it is to make your own pouring fluid with by mixing the polypore and the primer elements together. I'm actually making up bottles in advance so I can do the floral dip uh, as Fiona Art has been doing on Fiona Art on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, you need to take a look at it. She's amazing. So I'm going to simulate what I've learned from her. But I want to mix up quite a few colors and I'm going to put it in one of these. Uh, I've got this at a restaurant supply. It's a soft, very squeezy plastic that has a small tip. Now you want to f carefully fold the pigments in because I'm making pretty much a five ounce batch here all at once in my salsa cup. But you'll be surprised when you're mixing the primary elements, the polypore blend is your acrylic base to the perfect consistency. So you do not need to add water, which means you do not need to add pouring medium. It's ready, pour, ready to use. You do want to give the uh, color a chance to dissolve. These are not mica pigments. While there may be mica in them to make them shimmery, there is still color molecules that need to break down and dissolve. So you're not making instant coffee, but this is a heck of a lot easier than what it used to be of mixing the pigments in a thick enamel and then trying to add water and then add pouring medium and add water and we've cut all those steps out. So I'm going to fill up my little, uh, this is 12 ounce bottles, it's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but I love the tip on it because it was tiny. And that's one thing I've been watching Fiona do is she's getting the accuracy of how she's putting her drips down by using a nice uh, tip that dispenses her color out for her. So I went ahead and I mixed up, I think 11 colors but I'm just showing you the one. This color is called Kiwi. Okay, so we're going to be working with three canvases that I'm repurposing. This first one I put a little bit of white on the edges and I wanted to experiment with lubricating the center with just the polypore like we lubricate uh, a canvas with clear resin before we went adding the color down. Okay, and I'm using my silicone uh, to move it around, my little silicone brush. Okay, I'm just kind of measuring my area. Now that part's sped up. This part is real time because there's no real way to speed up putting the drops down and have you see in real time what we're doing. This first color is boysenberry. I ran out of snapdragon here so I had to use my boysenberry uh, which means I guess I'm going to have to put it up on the website for y'all because I think we uh, put it in the uh, special order section that is still being built for the website. We have over 216 colors but there's only a little over 63, I think. This color uh, listed on the website. This color is Guatemalan green. It's a green teal. So the white on the outside of this one was Rust-Oleum. It's a touch-up latex paint. And that's part of the test. I'm doing three repurposed canvases. Repurposed meaning there was already something painted on them that was scraped off and dried. Um, so the first one I'm going to use Rust-Oleum. Uh, the next one I think I'm using Artist Loft. And the final one I'm using R O. Oh, that same cyan white you're seeing me put in the, the uh, screen right now. That's also going to be the background on uh, one of the pieces. So I am dropping a little bit of our Vivid Siam White Enamel. This 
This next color is Blue Bayou. This is Stargazer. Love this color. It is a blue violet, but in an interference green base. And boy, it really changes. You'll see some close ups at the end on how you kind of get that green abalone shell look. some more of my Guatemalan green. Now this is my first attempt at the paper towel technique where she lays down her color, uh, puts a pre-moistened paper towel, not soaking wet, just lightly misted, and puts it over the top. For the center here, I, I re-moistened the center with a little bit of the polypore. It looked a little dry to me. That is sunburst yellow. A little bit of white. The cyan white. And this color is called jasmine. It's a hot rhodamine violet. Now this is Artist Loft Black mixed with a little bit of Liquitex pouring medium in water just for some definition. Okay, so it looks like we're going to do the paper towel. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, that's right. I've got to add some green. This first color going down um, is the kiwi. I'm doing them in a little triangle pattern so hopefully when the paper towel picks it up it forms into kind of a leaf shape. At least that's my rationale behind it and I'm sticking to it. I'm noticing the rustoleum is kind of fractaline. There's a reaction between the polypore and the rustoleum which could be a good thing. You never know. It could create more effects if you're doing a swipe with it. But that's part of what I was testing just to see how the different whites worked. Uh, my theory, because I've done quite a few of these off camera, is I was using way too much paint to lubricate the canvas. This is not a typical pour where you've got to have, uh, you know, the the top flooded with white before you could apply your color. Now I, I didn't think it was moist enough so I'm just gently misting with a spray bottle. Real light fine mist. I know you couldn't see me do it but I just moistened it slightly and I'm gently tapping the sections. Now I've done a couple more since this so in this one, I think I was a little bit too cautious to just kind of tap down where it's what, where the color is and not try to like tap it out left, right to spread my petals. But this was kind of my first attempt. I am using a paper towel that's got the six inch split in the middle. I'm going to get some different paper towels before we do the next video. And a slight little turn as you're pulling it up kind of helps the pattern. And then this is what I'm calling the Fiona Touch. Fiona Art YouTube channel. She's become kind of the expert at this. And I've noticed that every time she picks up her color, she sticks her finger in the middle and does the Fiona Touch Up. She kind of dips her finger there and exposes those colors in the center. It's okay. I, I, I'm getting some patterns. I'm getting an idea about how I can make some more definition in the center. This is a pretty interesting piece. But we're going to go on to our next one here.
So in this next area, it is sped up. I am covering the entire canvas with white, but not too much white, just enough to get it moist. You don't want to flood it, okay? And this first color I'm putting down is the Guatemalan green. This next color is Blue Bayou. That color is Stargazer. It looks really beautiful against that blue bayou. This is the boysenberry. It also could have been royal orchid because I do have a red violet and a blue violet. The red violet is royal orchid. The blue violet is, well, not really blue, but a deeper, more royal violet which is boysenberry. Here's a little cyan white to add some contrast in our little pools of color. This is the blue bayou. And Guatemala green again. Now I'm adding my sunflower in the middle. Surrounded by the jasmine. Little accent with the artist loft black. This looks like the Irish mist going down first. I use three greens. Irish mist, which is kind of the medium green. Kiwi, which is the bright, bright, light green. And then olivine, which is more of an earthy, beautiful olive color. This is the kiwi being dropped in the middle of the Irish mist. And now the olive. So now we're ready for our paper towel. It's been pre-misted, just slightly moist, and I miss the top of the towel if it doesn't look like it's quite moist enough. Just a little bit of water. Tapping it gently.
I'm getting a little bit braver on this one. Last time I was just wanted to tap it straight down. I was so worried I was going to ruin the pattern. Grab each corner, make sure you got a good handle on them, and keep pulling up the edges till you feel like you have control. Gather them on, don't let them go, and then a little twist as you pull it up. We're going to do the Fiona touch. I swear if you go watch her videos, you will see her do that every time. I'm liking this color combination a little bit better. I'm liking the patterns. My regret was I wasn't uh, more assertive about pushing the color out. feel a little bit unconfident about whether I should be using my tube to blow the petals out. But the color combination is pretty and we know it's going to shimmer like crazy on this canvas. So let's get a little close up on this. Even though it's wet, you can kind of see that the paint has a gorgeous shimmer to it. They are getting better, I must admit. Practice, I don't know if it makes it perfect, but practice makes you more confident. It gets a little bit better. Okay, this is really a rough repurposed one. I had put um, some gesso on it. It was kind of bumpy. This is all Artist Loft, by the way. That last one was the Siam White Vivid Enamel, and I liked how the paint reacted to the Siam. But, you know, I'm doing a voiceover now, so I can tell you how they reacted. Uh, the Artist Loft is just kind of a chalky white, and it has its purpose. But for this particular technique, you do not need to get your surface sloppy wet. It's just not necessary. Okay, so let's start applying the color to this third one. Best that I can tell, I believe this started with the boysenberry again. And I'm getting a little bit more confident about me putting my patterns down. That being said, they're not necessarily perfectly even. Guatemalan green. No surprise to all of you that have watched the first two. Oh, that was blue bite because I can tell by the color of this bottle, this is the violet. Actually, my apologies. First color is boysenberry. Second color is Guatemalan green. That is royal orchid. I could tell that it's a warm violet. This is Stargazer. And I'm noticing that the artist loft, see here, it's fractaline. The, the edges are kind of uh, reacting to the polypore. We didn't get that much of a reaction when we were using the Vivid Enamel, the, the Siam White. Here's the Siam White in our dots. Speaking of Siam White.
and our sunburst yellow in the center. Surrounded by the jasmine pink. What's nice about those two colors, not only do they make the center pop, but where they run together, they make a really pretty warm pinky coral. Those two colors when they meld, so they don't fight each other when they mix together. Some little artist loft black dots for contrast. And the olivine is going down first, the darkest color. Okay, so it's time to put the paper towel down. It's a little bit moistened. Well, I've got to move it around so it gets even. Now, again, I'm getting a little bit braver. This is my third one. Tapping out the colors a little bit further out. So apparently the camera uh, malfunctioned. So you're picking up each end. And one little turn as you pick it up. And doing the Fiona the Fiona dip at the end, her little touch, the Fiona touch. And here I'm using just uh, my tube to see if I can blow some of those petals out. I promised myself the next time I did this, uh, this floral dip with the paper towel, I'd be a little bit braver and push the color out while I have the paper towel there in front of me to do it, to help me do it. It's just getting used to the consistency of the paint. Uh, this is just a piece of tube that I cut long enough. It's about 30 inches so I could sit comfortably in my chair and blow like an airbrush. Actually, I like this third one best of all. I'm getting more and more comfortable about the design. And here's a close-up. And here's all three of them. So here's a close up on my iPhone camera. So you can just see the sparkle and the shimmer of this. This is directly right after they were poured. So yes, the paint is still wet. Boy, that primary elements just sparkles like crazy. And I'm so excited now. We have a beautiful product called Polypore that you can mix it in and instantly play and pour as you do with all your other acrylics. And I have another little set of video coming up here just a second because I did two close-ups with my phone. Here's a second one on one of the other pieces. I think this is the last piece. Which weather one had the most black in there? This might have been piece number two. Absolutely love how this looks. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. And please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Bye-bye.